TGIF, everybody. Hope everyone had a successful week, earned and learned. I know I do every week, learn. This week I earned. It's a pretty good combination besides when it rhymes. So uh, a trader friend of mine said, uh, asked me, he goes, uh, Dale, do you think it's uh, unreasonable to be looking for 96.50 Dixie by sometime next week? And uh, my answer is no. Uh, it's not unreasonable. You have a 120-point range here in the Dixie. It's on the verge of failing here. I'd sell rips. Uh, you're, you're wrong over the NFP high here. Uh, I, you know, this would be a sell. I don't think it's going to get up there. Any pop we get with some news here on a weekly basis. You know, uh Pretty, you know, follow through to the negative candle last week. So, you know, uh, we're going to close under the two-week off number. Uh, dollar looks heavy to me. Also, keep in mind, uh, look at all the risk off we've had this week with the trade uncertainty, right? So normally, you know, when S&Ps are down 25 handles or so, the dollar catches a bid. It didn't catch a bid. In fact, yesterday I was talking about euro. It said there were a couple of... Uh, ascending triangles here and we broke through on this candle we're still holding it and then there's a larger one well this was a small one right here on the one hour that it broke out it's trading above it right here it looks like 1220 uh, I don't see anything wrong with this until perhaps we start taking out this low okay 1170 and potentially you know, uh, we start getting through 112.60, then you're talking about 114-ish, okay? Uh, yeah, look at this moving average, comes in at 1240, so here it would measure 114. If you get through 114, you have a whole different thing going on, you know? Maybe you're talking about, uh, here it's again, 114, 114.50. So, you know, it's possible that may be enough to shake out uh, the uh over uh invested bullishness in the dixie and the dollar hi alina how are you so uh, any questions on my view of the dollar i think the dollar had plenty of opportunities to rally with risk off this week and it hasn't uh, i had a strong nfp last week it failed so uh, the dollar looks heavy to me Okay, so uh, potential targets, uh, maybe 114 in the euro if we start closing over some of these levels. Uh, of course, you know, you, you start getting closes back under, you know, 111.60, then you're talking about new lows. But, you know, I mean, the risk reward even from here in the Dixie isn't, isn't bad. I mean, you know, although I'd prefer to sell a pop, maybe there's some news to do it, but you're, you're just risking this high, 98.09. And potential for a hundred or so from here, maybe lower if you take it from there. So anyway, so I'm bearish. The dollar, uh, we negated this breakout. The 9780 is an important pivot, right? So this was the big weekly breakout that it failed from. And then we had a couple of candles above it. These are only four-hour candles, so maybe there was one day it closed back above it. You know what? It never even could. So it tried right here and couldn't get back above 97.80. So there's your line in the sand. We start closing back above that. Then, you know, the dollar, king dollar, king dollar, king dollar is back, back in play. Everyone with me on it? Looks pretty easy. Ziggy tweeted about, you know, trading is difficult. And it is. You know, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. But this is what I want you guys to think about over the weekend. How much time do you spend screening different instruments for ideas, research, journaling, so that you're prepared watching Blake's week ahead video, intelligence gathering? So, you know, it, it takes a lot of discipline and time to be prepared for this, especially if you have coverage on more than a few different instruments. So 
uh, you know, you can't expect money as a self-directed trader to just drop in your account without putting in the work. Okay. So the weekend's a good time to do it. I uh, just want to talk about the end here right now. You know, Blake pointed out we're at this real important support. We actually took it out. And, you know, I, I think that this line's going to be a magnet. Could take a stone towards the 108 level. And I kind of tie this in with what I see happening in yields. But right now, short term, I still think there's a chance for a better place to sell the end, maybe all the way up here. Okay. You know, because yields look like they might pop a little bit before they make new lows. So, I mean, this has a very close correlation. So, if this happens up here, uh, then I think you could uh, be short for a good move down to 108. And I think you'll see this action in 10 year yields while that's going on. It's going to be interesting to see how gold acts with the dollar breaking down, don't you think? So, I'm looking for another low in yields, right? Take out this 235. And, you know, that could put the TLT at new highs. And while this is going on down here, this is what I think could take the end down to 108 or so. And then once yields bottom, I know guys talking about 2%, though, you know, and uh, Jamie was on, his target was much higher than. Uh, three drive will be in TLT. I think he was talking 137. You guys enjoyed that interview yesterday? It, he, Jamie was hot. He had some, you know, nice looks. All right. So down here, I'm going to start looking for reasons to buy the yen after I think yield to based out. Okay. So basically, in the end, looking for a rally to sell long, but it's counter trend. And then uh, maybe we get a trade deal. And the N has one more rally left in it right here. Okay. We kind of had a little three drive. Here was one. Here was two. And on the third, we actually had two drives. Sometimes you have three. Maybe that's still going to happen. They're going to try and wash it out if we have a Black Friday, which I don't know. Those, you know. It's not a good week, okay? I don't care if you want to call this corrective and choppy, whatever it is. Um, it's not a nice looking weekly candle. See that? So, I mean, the next moving average is 2780. So, unless they really turn it today, uh, it's looking pretty ugly to me. Here's 2800. So, Maybe that's it. Sell in May and go away in full force, and uh, at least for now, uh, with do accompanied by dollar weakness, which is an unusual correlation we haven't seen for a while. Normally, risk on meant weak dollar, right? So uh, it will be interesting if we have uh, weak dollar with risk off. And so far, the market's hinting that may be the narrative. So I'm burned out after a long week. How about you guys? Does your brain feel like uh, it was in the frying pan? You know, like those old commercials, a brain's a terrible thing to waste. Like, a, you know, your brain is in a <laughs> an egg going into a frying pan. So, Blake, I'm scrambled eggs today. Are you an omelet? <laughs> I am officially tired. I am huh? tired. I am tired. Yeah. yeah. I'm. I, oh, I. Whenever I get up on Fridays, I'm just pretty much toast. I. It's. It's. Uh. It. I don't know about you, but it takes me an hour for my eyes to like adjust. Like it in the mornings. Like it. it you know. Like the. Towards the end of the week, I'm so tired that my eyes just aren't. You know. It's just trying to adjust to get ready for the day it's crazy you know yeah yeah well here we are you made it through how how'd the week go okay buddy yeah actually i had a good week i mean you know was, i did a lot of scalping it, you know it's not it wasn't a huge week in fx volatility um 
I mean, you know, the the yen the yen pairs were were good. Um, yeah. Shorting the yen pairs earlier this week, and uh, coming into Friday, you know, I, I was kind of um, bu bummed out this morning that that the um, the volatility isn't quite there, based on uh, the news that we're getting. And it seems to me, and and I'm going to come back and reference this chart based on what you were saying because I agree with you. Um, and uh, one thing, though, Blake, weren't you surprised that the dollar didn't catch a bid during all these days when S and P's were down twenty handles? Y yes, yeah, and that, that's well, that's the the point is is yeah. um, I'm surprised that the dollar didn't get stronger. Yeah, and um, and you're right, it had a lot of time to to weaken, and I wonder uh, why. And and yeah. uh, you know, I think a lot of it had to do with uh, the fact that everybody was optimistic that you know, something was going to get done or, you know, I don't know, but, but the, you know, looking at the Euro dollar, um, you know, this is the Euro and we're, we're above the, we, we broke above the uh, triangle uh -huh. resistance here. No, no, it's a look. I didn't yeah, have that trend line. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it you know, if, if you look at it, you know, in a four hour, I mean, we, we yeah. kind of above that resistance and we're holding and that's the, the point is that we're holding uh, futures are at the lows right now. And you would think with futures at the lows that the dollar would firm and it's not. And, 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 and um, there's, you know, a couple of maybe reasons why it's not happening is, you know, we could have uh, the euro dollar is being bought on a cross rate basis because it is a, it's a funding currency, you know? So, um, you know, when, when things are great, people are selling euro buying, uh, other things and you know as the as the you know the this the situation deteriorates then you're seeing uh, you know some of this cross cross currency buying not so much the euro yen but like let's take like the um, euro Aussie which is you know coming up into some pretty key resistance we're right at the 50% retracement right at um, uh, you know right up at, at the uh, range highs uh you get you know you got the euro new zealand that continues to to blaze higher um you've got the let's go over the euro canadian the euro canadian is you know is making a, a bit of a move uh you got the not the euro swiss uh not the euro pound but like the euro mexican peso has uh has staged a bit of a rally here uh as we we've come off um you know come off of these lows so you know, maybe there's some euro buying against other rates that's keeping the euro relatively well bid. Uh, and it's going to be interesting as equities continue lower, you know, where, where, where do dollars get reallocated? I think one of the places that we have to watch is we have to watch these emerging market currencies. You got the uh, dollar Mexican peso that's trying to come out of this triangle um, and in a bullish manner. And that's, Typical of risk off. When you get risk off, you 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 tend to sell you know some emerging market currencies. So whether it's the the peso, um, you know the U.S. dollar, uh, South African rand might catch a bid. Uh, the the Turkish lira has just been sold pretty consistently. But I think we got to watch some of those currencies as well. Um, the cable's still trading heavy, and you know the cable's been more of a surprise this week that it's been as heavy as it's been, and. Um, and I'm surprised that it hasn't gone higher. Maybe not so much because of the developments in the UK, but more so because the um, the fact that uh, that we had such a strong weekly close on the the cable at the end of the at the end of the week. I'm surprised we didn't get any follow through from a technical standpoint. Uh, you know, we closed right at the six one eight, and then we've been drifting lower all week long, but you know, being at the end of the week and you're seeing, you know, some dollar weakness come through the market, you know, maybe the cable might firm up here and, uh, and, and start breaking higher. I think it is possible. Now, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see how things progress this, the, the, at the, um, end of the, uh, end of the week, especially with the U S China delegation, uh, um, you know, still talking, and then we have, you know, Donald Trump and uh, um, President Z, Z is probably going to be discussing uh, what's happening over the phone. So 
I, I'm assuming that's going to happen at some point today. So we gotta, we've got, we've got to see what the response is. But you know, the dollar yen. This is the chart I really want to focus on here uh, at this point. If you look at the dollar yen, and you look where we're at, we're and let me get rid of this. We're we're obviously at very key support here, and this support comes in at you know the 109.50 level, and we are we're there. Uh, we probed below it yesterday. Let me get rid of this downtrend line. That was an intraday thing that I was watching last night in Asia before I took off to my son's uh, soccer match. Um, or uh, soccer tryout, excuse me. But you'll you'll notice that we're we're sitting here right at this 109.50, and I think you know if if things continue to deteriorate with the U.S. and China, then you know we could very easily see a move below these trend lows, and I think that's going to probably startle uh, the market a bit. Um, I think it'll, it'll you know it, it might send us into a little bit of a, a tizzy. It's interesting when you when you look at China and the U.S. right now, both sides seem fairly content from a posturing standpoint. So what I mean by that is, I don't know if China is ready to roll over and you know give and, and bow down to the U.S.'s demands. And uh, you know, obviously, the U.S. side is hell bent on raising tariffs, which they have gone to an, into effect. And we haven't seen more of a response. And I believe that is because the market still thinks that the U.S. and China are ne negotiating and, and talking. So they don't want to get, you know, too too carried away at this point in time. But if, if, if this, if today progresses and there are no, um, you know, no, you know, no real uh, advancement in talks and you're going to get people a little nervous going into this weekend. Now I'm, I'd like to err on the, the side of optimism that, uh, that you have to be a little careful going home short risk this weekend. Okay. The reason why I say that is because we are heading into the weekend. These, it's a very fluid situation. Um, you know, between the time the market closes and the time the market reopens on Sunday, we could have an extreme of either situation. China delegation goes home, uh, U.S. China, you know, after negotiating, hangs up the phone on each other, tells each other, gives each other the the, the middle finger, and walks away from the bargaining table, and the market's going to complete free fall on Monday, or the exact opposite could happen to that. We we could have, you know, uh, U.S. China make make nice by Sunday, and the S and P gaps up thirty points. So, uh, I think the risk of being caught on the wrong side of the market at the you know at, you know being caught on the wrong side of the market on Sunday is high. So if you are in positions over the weekend you have to take that into consideration. Or if you're thinking about taking a position in over the weekend, just think about what you're doing and the risks associated with the trade. Imagine that something could gap, you know, 100 pips, and I'm talking FX predominantly. Imagine something could gap 100 pips in either direction on you. Are you able to sustain that loss? And if you can't, then, the the safer bet is going to be just get out, just get out, and then you know and 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 reevaluate everything on Sunday night. Uh, you know that's the approach I'm going to take this weekend. I don't, I'm not in. I, I didn't. It's not like I uh, I uh, went long the euro at you know one eleven. 37 and here we are at 112 30 and I'm like okay well you know I've held this position since last week and I'm long and I'm up 100 pips I can take the risk that's one thing if you're in a position and you 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 you're very well positioned in a trade and you're like okay I'm willing to take that risk because I bought it or I sold it at such a good price then that's fine but if you're if you're initiating new trades today right now at this moment and you take a position in over the weekend, 
you are really rolling the dice. You are, you're, you're, it's a complete gamble at this, at this stage in the game. I mean, you may have your arguments and you could, you could, you could say, well, you know, um, you know, the U S and China, this is all just, you know, hard negotiating tactics and something's going to get done. And then, you know, and, 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 and you could be right, but at the same time, you know, look who we're dealing with and, understand that you could be completely wrong and there's no re and, and there's no sense in, in trying to gamble especially with your hard-earned investment dollars you know the money that you've been squirreling away to trade the markets you know save the opportunities for the time that you have liquidity where you can get in and out versus you know taking a pop shot on the market unless you're positioned well and I hope that makes sense um, you know Stelios Steve I don't know if you guys are listening in right now or, or even you Dale um, but but I'm here Good morning. Do, do, you, do you have any comments um, regarding what I just said because that, I think that's that's prudent I'd say prudence over bail valor yeah I don't mean be a hero kind of thing you know what I mean I right. agree right I mean but I uh, but that's the mentality of a lot of retail traders is you know uh, i know what's going to happen i'm willing to take the risk and then you know you, you're going to wake up on the wrong side of the you, there's a good chance you could wake up on the wrong side of the market you, you know come sunday and then you're spending the entire week trying to make back what you had lost and you know and 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 you know some traders are you know, just end up digging their hole a little deeper uh you know because they find themselves you know behind and then they miss out a lot on a lot of opportunities i hope that makes sense uh stelios what do you think i i agree i mean it depends on the uh, each person's personality but i personally have um had the unfortunate experience both when i was a market maker in a bank in london and also when i was um uh, trading ea uh, to have had, you know, some uh, a couple of pretty bad days due to such decisions, and it's made me, you know, every time, you know, thankfully this has happened only a few times, but every time it happens, it makes me afterwards may think even more, even harder. You know, do I want to be in this position with this uncertainty? You know, um, or you know, big binary events. Unless I have a really, really firm view on it, I stay away. And and uh, because you know, I've been hurt in the past, and I think. Quite a few people have been hurt and when people have this mentality you know i want to get rich quick you know i think i'm right this is going to happen this way i go all in or you know i put on a big trade usually it will destroy you that's the problem yeah and and i and i think it just you know it's really important to understand that and um and and understand that uh that that you know it, you you have the market is the market is going to be here when you get back or on Sunday and it's going to, it's going to present opportunities. And I know how, um, uh, you know, how tempting it is to be wanting to, you know, take a position wanting and hoping that, 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 you know, the market's going to move for you in your direction uh, over the weekend. And, and, and I also know what it feels like when you get out of everything and, and then you, uh, then Sunday happens and, and you, and you would have been, right. been rich. Yeah. And you're like, man, I, you know, I could have, I could have made a what lot of money. Should have. Yeah. But you have to think about what, could, what, 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 what if the opposite happens too? And, and, you know, what if, you know, you could have made money, but yes, but how about if things didn't work out the way you thought, you know, and then you would have had a really, really bad, you know, week or, you know, whatever it's and, and so I think it's just important to have that, you know, being able to, to understand that, that it can work in either direction. And even if you were right, um, you could have been, you know, uh, absolutely wrong as well. And, 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 and what was the saying that you, you said, Dale? Uh, prudence over valor. I think that that makes a lot of sense uh, as a trader. You know, why can't people just, I mean, you, if you're a soccer or football fan, you could watch a game without having money on it and enjoy it and just be a spectator. So yeah. why can't you do that uh, with the market for a few days? Right, until until things settle down, yeah. until things, you know, pick a direction. Like, you know, let's say let's say right at this moment in time, I looked at the euro and I go, well, you know, that, that chart looks pretty bullish, okay? So I bought the euro right now, all right, let's just say. 
unless unless the euro got to where you know like my blue line is showing like by the end of the day you know we do have cpi data coming out let's say the data is weak and the euro just you know rallies up here you know if we if we went from you know 112.30 to 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 112.90 80 and i was in a position and i was fortunate enough to pick up the euro and be long and and, and ride that that wave i would probably take half the position off move my stops to break even understand that you know i could get up sunday morning and you know the euro's trading down here and i get stopped out for a loss on the remaining uh, my remaining position but i would do that if i was in a profitable position going into the weekend it's hard for me to do it you know take a position over the weekend and be when, be or down if you yeah, break break even or down and just hoping that things work out for you um, at the at oh. the open on Sunday. Oh, I have another expression with hope. Hope is the oxygen in our lives, but it's the carbon dioxide in our trading. There you go. I like it. Huh? I like it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm I'm trading out of the garage in my car with the door closed. Yeah, let's hit the garage door opener. Let that out. All right. Um, and anyway, good morning, Steve. How are you doing? Good yeah, morning, Blake. Yeah. Good. You know, TGIF. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I think we're all happy that it's Friday, and you know, I'm 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 more I'm, I think I'm going to be more happy being a spectator. I actually had. Uh, the, I, I made some money this week. I'm happy about that. Um, and I, I think right at this point in time, I'm going to be happy just, uh, just, you know, uh, being on the sideline for the most part, unless something really happens today and just, uh, and, and, and looking to see how the market reacts after the weekend, um, you know, negotiations. So, um, so I'm going to pass it over to you cause I know there's let's a lot see. of cross rates that you want to talk about. Let's hope and, it doesn't, doesn't end up like Brexit. The China thing, I mean, and the negotiate. Yeah. Well, look, because look, I, look at how I long it's already, or how how long it's already, you know, stretched out. I mean, it, you know, this this. Oh yeah, over. but now we've entered the phase of, uh, you know, um, negotiating, and the market really, really waiting imminently what's going to happen. Before, at least, it was, you know, some vague um, rumors like things are going good. Things will be going better, etc. Now everybody is like waiting to hit a button. Depends on what happens. If it breaks down, it doesn't break down. We get uh, tariffs being hiked. Who knows? Yeah. Anyhow, well, let's hope it gets resolved fast. Let's do it. And and uh, well, I, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks everybody for being here. Thanks make. for supporting us. And uh, good luck for the CPI to CPI release. And uh, don't forget to visit our sponsors, Forest Park FX. Um, and uh, and you guys have a great, great, uh, great remainder of the weekend or remainder of the week. You, you too, buddy. Bye bye. Right. Bye bye. Thanks, Blake. So we have Canadian data as well. Um, until that, we have a minute and a half, so maybe I can uh, make a couple of comments. Um, we you had. I will we'll wait for the data. And, and uh, then have... I can say. I can say one okay. thing now and then. Um, okay. We had today. A currency which I particularly like, people in the chat will know. We had Norwegian CPI, which uh, stayed at 2.9% year on year. That was slightly higher than expected. It was expected to drop to 2.8. Bottom line is inflation is still uh, pretty high. And Norges Bank did mention it explicitly in the previous meeting a couple of days ago. And uh, I think with this print, the rate hike is definitely on for next month. Uh, it's it's largely expected by the market so anyway. So, a nice don't... reaction, by the way, here. Yeah, it wasn't a big reaction, but uh, it no. did strengthen a little bit. Uh, but as I said yesterday, the question is, what happens after this hike? You know, there's uh, people talking about another hike before year end. Other um, others are not. So there's going to be a, 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 a move either way after that, to going into year end. Um, so it's still early days for that, but just something to keep in mind. Um, let's okay, card, let's let's switch way. to USD. Yeah, USD card. I think is the one to watch. You have employment. Uh, what is it? Employment change. So USD building, building, building yes. perm permits. Yeah. We have That's quite a few and. Fifteen seconds left. Yes. I'm going to increase my volumes. So you can Ten seconds the before the release. Stand by. Mm -hmm. okay. I love that. Ten seconds yeah. before the. <laughs> yeah. 
let's see. All right. There we go. 0 0.3 versus 0 0.4 uh, CPI. So CPI weaker uh, month on month as well, year on year as well, two from 2.1. Wow. Employment data building. in Kenya, Canada was amazing. Yeah. 106,000. Whoa. Yeah, that, that's why. Whoa. Yeah. That's why we're seeing this, this movie here. 106,000 versus 10,000 that was expected. So actually, we beat 10 times the forecasted number. The previous one was actually negative, minus 7.2. Canadian yeah. unemployment after that drops to 5.7 from 5.8. Participation, participation rate that, rises as well. As well, that's yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. So yeah, in, uh, very, very good data out of Canada. Uh, yeah. Okay, trade balance. Wow. Okay. So uh, in essence, better Canadian data, uh, worse uh, US data, worse. <laughs> Actually, you know, I've uh, I've started getting affected by by the skewed, um, you know, point of view for economics because having lower inflation is a good thing. Actually, On, only central banks, you know, want to make people believe that. Uh, lower inflation is a bad thing. Um, so, yeah, um, it makes sense that we're going to see. I mean, I, I would actually expect a bigger movement lower, keeping in mind that Canadian data really blew through the roof. Uh, they were extremely good uh, versus expected, and U.S. Uh, data uh, were, you know, a little bit weaker. I would have expected a big reaction here from the USD CAD. USD CAD, uh, of course, did uh move like 30 pips but i would honestly be you know expect something more uh from here we still remain above these broken triangles um trend line resistance this this time at the support so let's let's go and, and have a look at okay. some of the rest of the person the four hour chart and see how they reacted Steve, a couple of things, uh, Steve, yes, just one thing before we continue um, mm -hmm. we, have, we also just worth mentioning, we had some data out of the UK as well. I know it's not uh, as important as, as the Brexit uh, developments, but still we have to mention it. GDP, uh, the second revision of Q or third revision, whatever it was, Q1, um, in line at uh, half a percent. Uh, industrial mm -hmm. production, manufacturing production both beat uh, quite substantially as well. And trade balance also came in a little bit better than expected. So overall, you know, good data out of the UK. And um, uh, Let's see so. What the uh, yes, the pound's much. not doing anything, yeah, because Euro, we're at the point, yeah, Euro we're at the point where bad. Labour and, and Conservatives are still trying to negotiate something, and that's clearly taking uh, center stage. I also want to say one thing uh, before I forget. Uh, our friend Simon is asking for USD sec, so can you have a look at that afterwards, please, Steve? Absolutely. Anything for Simon? Uh, nice overshooting here. I was monitoring at this ascending channel. First of all, um, let's let's just point out here that USD SEC is anyhow bullish since we broke above this triangle. As you can see, actually, I put these lines. These lines should be exactly like that. So this was the major consolidation that we were monitoring for a long time. This triangle. And once we broke above this triangle, um, obviously, you know, we were back on bullish mode because this is a textbook consolidation. Now, not only that, but we double verified the um, um, the importance of this uh, triangle's trend line resistance and at the same time this horizontal support resistance area because once we failed, we came back, we retested this confluence and we just accelerated higher once again so then i drew this parallel trend line to this one um seeing perhaps you know trying to see perhaps if if that might uh produce some resistance it actually did once twice but once we broke through it it then acted as support so as you see you know drawing parallel trend lines sometimes are useful because you know if this specific one acted twice as resistance and what now once a support so i have to say that um we remain bullish uh this 945 area should be support from this point on so i think against 945 um you know you should keep looking higher that that's that's what i think uh now as you see i've already 
uh, made uh, some uh, you know uh, implied I've, I've already drawn some implied targets from the fib extension of this corrective move the next area of interest is the 161.8 percent extension at 974 so you know we might be uh, on our way there um that's it with that obviously i wouldn't be buying after this move right so uh, <clears throat> I'm, i mean if i was really looking to buy i would be hoping in this case for a pullback here and if i saw some kind of a reaction i would then be buying for a continuation higher because buying here makes no sense from a risk world perspective but would i be fading this move now no i wouldn't be fading this move now i would i would want to see more a lot more um so Stelio, did we have anything else uh nope just the china but we uh, blake talked about that so that's about it okay okay um by the way uh indices uh let, let me say first of all yesterday i indicated that a key area for the s p was this one 2865 to 2870 you can see it here on my chart um on a daily closing basis we held that area once again we did plunge lower intraday there's no question about it i mean and quite a lot we made it uh we actually saw uh what was it 2836 or something like that but the market pulled back and we actually held that horizontal support resistance area once again on a daily closing basis so let's see if today we will actually manage to close uh, below it um, because there is you know there is the chance that we're going to have the same type of price action once again right other than that having said that uh, admittedly indices remain uh, you know they, they look quite weak actually the nasdaq yesterday tagged this first target that I had indicated, you can see here the confluence of the 50 uh, DMA and the horizontal support uh, resistance area at 74.75. Um, so let's see what happens uh, today. Obviously, you know, news are going to be important. Um, another thing to indicate, if you remember, we, we, we were having a look at the VIX index with the coach the other day. And, you know, I said that I was looking for this descending trend line resistance to break the upside to create. <clears throat> Uh, some expansion in the volatility. We did have that happen. My target was 25.6. We didn't make it quite there. But on the other hand, you need to note here that yesterday, uh, today actually, early in the day, we uh, hit the horizontal support resistance area support in the VIX, and now we've created a hammer. So it's likely that we're going to see another move higher uh, from the VIX, which in that case should tag that 25. Um, so, you know, even if you have a look at the VIX, uh, it looks good for, um, you know, another move lower for the uh, indices. I'm still holding my S&P uh, short, so I have absolutely no problem with seeing more bearish price action. I'm actually looking forward to it. I'm a little bit skeptical, of course, ahead of the news, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm going to hold my position. Uh, there is a question from Olivier about Eurosec, and since we, you know, we we had a look at the rest of the sec pairs, we we might as well look at this before we move to something else. So Eurosec, Eurosec also remains quite bullish. Uh, Eurosec actually, this is a very nice indication textbook uh, of a cap and handle formation. You can see it here, textbook continuation formation. As you see, Eurosec, since we find found the low here in 2012 has produced a series of up moves and then periods of consolidation moves higher periods of consolidation same deal here i mean we are at multi-year highs um and you know i have no reason to to look lower um from this point on this 1060 area should be uh support right so uh, obviously i would be advocating that somebody should buy it here because where would you place your stop loss the next area of resistance, by the way, is at 11, the 78.6% um, FIB of this move lower, the move that started uh, in 2009 and bottomed out in 2012, as we said. Um, and, you know, it, it, it looks good. Obviously, as you see, the RSI reading, you know, had hit the daily RSI had hit 80. So, you know, at some point we're going to see a pullback. But, you know, it's, it's very bullish. I mean, it's been bullish for seven years. So, you know, trend is your friend. And as I said, any deep 
back down to retest these highs here at 1060, this area. Probably a good buying opportunity. Okay. If we get something like this, a pullback event like this. I just was going to uh, say, when I was looking at that, Steve, is that uh, that momentum that you had there, um, normally a market won't top on it, but then I looked to the left and there was huge momentum before the last correction on it, too. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. sometimes these markets don't have to diverge to peak. And, uh, you know, my work usually says when you have a confirmed high to expect at least another one, you know, that may or may not confirm. But there's, a, you know, nothing works all the time. Oh, that's absolutely See, certain. Have, speaking you know, of the previous highs, since you mentioned it. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You mentioned it. As you see, see how it we've peaked all, on, yeah, yeah. We've already passed above uh, yeah. those. Let's. This is some kind of an overthrow. I'm, I'm really curious to see. Yeah, it looks Perhaps like a three drive almost. Yesterday's candle was a long one. After, after such a strong move higher. We had another long candle yesterday. Let's see if this is some kind of a short-term exhaustion. I'm not advocating that somebody should try to catch a falling knife here. Actually, this is the exact Make opposite sure. scenario of, of catching a falling knife. But um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what's going to happen from here. Definitely, dev definitely very overbought uh, in the short term. I'm guessing that if we switch to a four-hour chart here, it's going to be RSI will have blown through the roof probably yeah rsi on the four hour like above 85 and this is the channel i was monitoring on the four hour as you see interesting actually actually quite an interesting channel here i have on the four hour let's see what happens from here it's an interesting level i mean yeah if you really want to fade it here you can you know be short against against this high which is like a very very tight risk reward would i be doing that no i wouldn't but you know from a risk reward perspective it looks quite interesting for at least some mean reversion okay um yeah that's it so we're on the resistance at the moment let's see what happens from here uh, definitely though keep in mind a multi-year uptrend so whatever you do keep that in mind a multi-year uptrend um let me go back because we had some questions. The market will only be there. Yep, cut data in five. Yes, we covered that. Um, good morning. The best way to think about the rationale for central banks wanting inflation is to think about the effects of, yeah, exactly. That's what they want to do. They want to, in essence, um, you know, that, um, they, they, they want to cut the debt, you know, in this indirect way. How do you feel about the rate hike in Canada this year? Noticed pollers mentioned it in the last policy meeting. Tell you if you're still here, that's a question for you. Yeah. Actually, what do you th what do you think about the chances of a rate hike in Canada? Oh, uh, uh, what well, based on this number or in general? I, I don't think there's. You know, they, they switched to a very neutral stance uh, recently, and uh, if anything, they've been more dovish than expected. So I don't think one number will change anything at this point. I think that the thing that might change things is if we start seeing, um, if we start looking at inflation uh, creeping higher, actually going a lot higher. So I think uh, very little change in terms of what the Bank of Canada is going to do on the back of this number. Okay, yeah, but it was a huge number. Yeah, of course. But remember, uh, there was a few months back, five or six months back, we had another number like this, 90-something K. We did, that? we did. Yeah, we did. And, and we then did. it was a negative, a slightly negative the next month. Yeah. You know, if yeah. you look at the, say, six-month moving uh, rolling average of this, okay, it's going up, but it's not really, uh, you know, it's not uh, anything substantial, let's say. So I think, uh, yes, it's a very good number, but I don't think right now anything has changed, really. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, speaking of which, we had a question about the USD Swiss. Let me say to this, there was the potential that this was a bull flag. Okay. Um, today, we see quite, you know, a nice momentum to the downside following yesterday's nice momentum to the downside. Be careful. We're currently testing here this 101 area, as you see. If I zoom out, this area has acted at, at, five, multi, uh, at five different occasions as a as a topping zone, so as a strong resistance area. 
let's see if it, it can actually act as support. So um, if we bridge this to the downside, I think, you know, there is a decent chance that we're going to be seeing more downside to come. So, you know, pay attention and paying attention to this zone and we see what happens from there. If we start breaking down, then we can even start considering this as a false breakout from this ascending wedge, right? So that's going to be a bad omen uh, for the bulls if we, we, we're not there yet. We haven't confirmed something like that. So just to make myself clear, okay? Um, we also have a question about Euronoc. Uh, okay, people seem to love the Scandinavian currencies today. Uh, Ooh la la. <laughs> Euronoc. Um, look, look at this view for the Euronoc. First of all, a well-defined uptrend. I mean, this is the most basic concept of an uptrend. Consecutive higher lows, and in this case, even a trend line that validates. So you can't get more of a you know textbook uh, uptrend than this one. Okay, we've yeah. been moving higher since uh, since 2012, coach. <laughs> 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 but yeah. Scandinavian always, women, buddy. Uh, don't tell me about that because I had, <laughs> I had my bachelor party in Stockholm. Oh and man! I, I went back to my wife and told her, you know, yeah. uh, it it was a good test for me uh -huh. <laughs> prior, prior to the wedding because you know having come, uh, having been back from Stockholm to get married to you, it means that I really want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that does mean, yeah. All right, man. Yeah, yeah. you're strong, man. I uh, would have yeah. failed. Yeah. Literally, the literally, flesh I'm, is, the flesh literally I'm not exaggerating in that. We had to send women away from clubs. I mean, wow. it's, an, it's a very open society, literally. Yeah. Okay, back we, to we, Europe, please. Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm calling my <laughs> travel agent right now, Stel. <laughs> you should, actually. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. So, so no. use the knock. Um, use the knock. Textbook uptrend. Euronock. Uh, sorry, yeah, Euronock. Textbook uptrend. But what do we see here? We see that despite holding the uptrend from its most basic interpretation, which is the higher lows, at the same time, the market finds it tougher and tougher and tougher to produce new highs. I mean, we do get new highs, but each time now they're more incremental. So this has started looking like a very decent wedge to me. Bottom line, Stelio, because I know how much you love the potential of Euronoc breaking to the downside. I have to say that once we break this ascending trend line uh, support, I think that this thing is going to really drill for oil. I mean, I believe that once we violate this uptrend, there's going to be likely a massive move to the downside. The, I, the question, the problem I have is I think it might try to get one more high, one more uh, no, high. Of course, the, it, is, it is an ascending wedge. Of yeah. course it can. Of yeah. course it can. So just you, to you take have to out, keep that just to take out as many shorts as possible, and then it's going to oh, collapse. Absolutely, my, my absolutely. And and you know something, if the market wants to inflict the maximum pain to the m maximum number of participants, something that we know uh, sadistically the market likes to do, it might even do something more than what you asked. It might do something like this. Yes. Right. Overthrow the wedge. Get everybody long. Like, oh, this is a bullish wedge. Now We're now headed much higher. And then reverse and go all the way down, break the support uh, trend line as well, and then never look back. So keep that in mind. Uh, at some point, I think a very, very interesting market to trade. I mean, at some point, I think there's going to be some major opportunity for, for money to be made here short. Also, also positive carry, and, and they're going to hide. Positive carry, too. absolutely. So Absolutely. priced in, but but uh, carry is going up as well. So yeah, it's uh, it's. I love this trade. You know it. I've I've done it like yeah. twelve. But we're not there yet, Stenio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, th I think it's one of the trades that's worth uh, waiting for because once it confirms, I think there's going to be a lot more 
uh, money to be made to the downside than what what you would uh, would have lost by being a little bit patient. That's what I think here. Yeah. yeah. So you know, this trend line, and you know, if if you want to add a horizontal area to the mix, this horizontal support area at 9.57, I think a break below that and poof, that's it, we're gone. I mean, afterwards, I think there's going to be major liquidation of long positions. Uh, so, good point, interesting uh, pair to watch, but I won't be doing anything with that yet. Okay. Uh, Ronnie says he's short, and as I said, you you can end up being early and making even more to the downside but I, you know i would still be careful here because nobody as Taylor said nobody tells us that we can't have like another high before we actually plant lower uh, simon says <laughs> matt would be proud <laughs> matt actually wouldn't be proud for sending away women he would be proud if you if i did the opposite i'm guessing <laughs> knowing matt <laughs> from um okay uh <laughs> now we have questions about metals so a, I have to say that I feel a little bit stupid here with uh, <laughs> Palladium because I had an order to close my position at 12.65 and the market did not hit my order for like $1. Um, uh, wait, am I looking at the right? Yeah, I am looking at the right thing. Um, so yeah, that was like a major move that happened overnight and I didn't get triggered like for $1. But, you know, I, I've had the opposite happen as well, so I don't want to complain by, uh, you, you know, by only keeping in memory, you know, the cases at which you were unlucky, like for one peep or for one dollar or for whatever else. I've had cases that, you know, a, an order was actually, um, uh, you know, a limit order was actually hit and then the market reversed like one peep later. So, you know, it, it, you know, it's a sword that cuts both edges. Um, so bottom line, we made it to the area I was looking for. If you remember, I, I indicated yesterday very clearly that this is the first area I would expect the market to produce a reaction from. And so far it has done so. Um, now, does that mean that we're headed higher from here? Absolutely not. There's still no indication that we're not going to be going to the 50% FIB here or even to the target of this bear flag, the equality of this ABC which would target like 1,176. So nice reaction from there, but we might as well uh, still have more downside for uh, Palladium. Uh, Platinum still holding below 875. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you have to keep looking lower. Copper also hit here, as you see, my next um, area of interest. It barely did so, but it did. Um, and we got a reaction from there. Keep that, keep though in mind that as long as we remain below uh, 284, uh, you know, the path of least resistance remains lower. And having to do with gold and silver, nothing to do yet. I'm saying yet because as you see, gold is quite close to this descending trend line uh, resistance. I think that a break above this trend line resistance is probably a good indication that. Uh, gold wants to move higher from there. So uh, I think it's worth taking that trade. Um, I don't know if I'm going to take it. Depends on how many other positions I have um, on my account at that point in time. It depends on when it happens. For example, if it does so today, I'm not going to be buying gold at the end of uh, Friday, although I would rather be long gold uh, over a weekend than be short gold over a weekend. Same with oil. I mean. If you want to have a position in oil, you'd rather be uh, long than short over a weekend because usually when you have unexpected events uh, that might move the market, usually those are um, market moving events that will move gold and uh, crude to the upside and not uh, to the downside. Regardless, gold hasn't done this move yet. So 12.65 is the area of support and this trend line resistance uh, is the two areas you should be monitoring um silver same deal here as you see exactly the same type of formation um you know we either see a break below this 1458 or a break above this descending trend line if you want more confirmation wait for a break above 15 dollars i think that if we do break above 15 dollars we should head back to at least towards 1560 so i think there should be at least 
60 more cents to be made to the upside, if not more than that, right? I mean, nobody says that we cannot actually produce a much bigger move, even even as part of a correction, right? Like and maybe the weaker later. dollar plays into the metals uh, having a heartbeat here too. What do you think? Absol absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That yeah. might be the case. Speaking of the dollar coach, this is what I'm monitoring having to do with the dollar. Yeah, R right there. This, uh, this ascending trend line support, you see it here. Well, yeah, where is it I coming think, in? Uh, currently, yeah. 96.70. Okay, I think we had a low there too. So uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you know, uh, we're not there yet. So I think it's yeah. a little bit premature jumping short. Uh, you know, the DXY. Uh, but if we break below ninety six six seventy, things might start you know moving, and in that case, Blake that jumped again here in Euro USD. Uh, I'm not saying that, of course, as an accusation because. You know, Blake knows very, very well what he's doing. And, you know, yeah. he's an extremely experienced trader. I'm saying that, you know, for people that might not be so much, keep in mind that, you know, experienced traders even know when, when they're willing to violate, you know, some of the rules because they yeah, have that was in mind. market wizards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Jack, he has those guys, you know. Uh, Personally, he, for me, yeah, yeah. for me to be interested in the long Euro USD. Uh, potential. I want you need to see a breakout. This. Yes, 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 yes. So this confluence, as you see now, this trend line confluences with this horizontal area, both of them passing from 113. So I want to see a move above 113. If I do see a move above 113, then I, you know, I can start appreciating the potential of, uh, you know, being long the Euro USD. Personally, you will. I would still not. I would still not take that trade. I have to tell you. Yeah. I would still not take the trade. I think there are better opportunities out there. Um, what would be your favorite way of playing a weak dollar besides a dollar index then, Steve? That's a good question, actually. What would be my favorite US dollar? It would, it would also be a good blog post. You know something? Uh, in combination with how technicals look at the moment, probably move in gold uh, above okay. this. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah, probably. Now, having to, I have you currency, no. having to do with currencies, I have to tell you in advance that I would rather be long the cable here yeah. than, than uh, the fiber. You're probably right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's been beaten down the last four days, so it has underperformed the last four days, the Euro USD, but I like how it's holding again on yeah. this 130 uh, area. So, and I don't know. is telling you it should be the preferred long too, right? Uh, it's a good thing you mentioned EG because I showed that a few days ago. EG was testing actually this channel support. We yeah. rebounded from there, but keep in mind that as long as we remain below 87.20, 87.30, yeah. there is still a decent potential for this to be a consolidation before a, a continuation right. lower. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not very enthusiastic about trading the euro pound, but, you know, if you forced me to do so, I would probably sell it and buy it. Yeah. So right. I, I, I tend to agree. So that, that makes the pound your preferred long. Yeah. 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 I think the trade man. deal happening, will the USD become bullish? Yep. Uh, the expected reaction would be dollar strength if that's uh, the case, if we do get some type of a, a deal. If we get a deal, says Antonia, uh, if we, or positive news on the trade negotiation, do you think Palladium will still go on a down course? Probably not. Probably not Pal uh, Palladium. We've seen Palladium reacting uh, quite, it's quite positively correlated with risk. So I would expect that that 1266 uh, spike low that we had, that might prove to be the low if we get something positive from uh, uh, the US-China deal, Antonia. Hi guys, where is the YouTube live stream? I like to watch this and rewind and hear certain points again, if necessary. Um, let me open an incognito window so I can show you as a visitor. If you go to YouTube, 
a new type Forex Analytics. Here is our channel, Forex Analytics. Okay. Uh, and every single video is uh, is being posted here at its category, so you can, you know, uh, go back later and and watch it. And yes, we do live stream um, all webinars uh, on YouTube and uh, Twitch and Facebook. Okay. Um, I skip any questions? We do have no, a guest today. Yeah, I think I covered everything. So, like coach, usual. Yeah. Yeah. So, coach, enjoy the interview. Everybody have a lovely weekend. Get some rest. And you know, we might we might get an interesting week uh, ahead of us. Depends on what happens with the potential of a trade deal, especially if it breaks down and we see you know some angered tweets or whatever. There is a decent potential that we're going to have a very volatile week ahead. Keep in mind also, as we uh, as we just showed, uh, the dollar is getting close to, um, you know, a make it or break it area. Same with the metals. So I'm quite optimistic that we're going to have some interesting days ahead. Thank you, Coach. May, may you live in interesting times, William Shakespeare. Yeah, uh, hopefully only only interesting times having to do with the markets, coach. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> Have a great weekend, Steve. I, I'd rather not not go through the, through a war, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, interesting times. Uh, My grandfather uh, fought in the Second World War, and I know too many stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we've been for, uh, in the sweet spot. We'll see. Time will tell, like everything. So. Steve, have a great weekend. Manny, there is no live stream at the moment on YouTube. Anyway, that's what Manny says. Really? Yeah. Okay, that must be a technical issue. I'm going to have a look at it immediately. Of course, too late for today. Yeah. But we always have probably, uh, there must have been some, some kind of a technical glitch. I'm going to have a look at it to make sure that it doesn't happen again on Monday. Okay, buddy. All right, uh, Stan. Really looking forward to having a conversation with you, Stan. I just made you the presenter, and you'll see a drop-down menu to share your screen and turn your mic on. And really welcome, welcome to face, Stan. Okay, thanks, Dale. Uh, just give me a minute to because I have four screens <laughs> okay. to pick the right one. Yeah. This is uh, made. This is ground control to Major Tom. David Bowie. So uh, stands in a spaceship and deciding what he's going to show us. And yeah, yes, exactly. Stan, I've been seeing you on Twitter. I don't know how many years. I, I think you even used to. Uh, oh, you do. You follow me again on and off. You follow me, right? Well, to be honest, Dale, I had to clean my stream and I may have accidentally deleted you as my follower. Oh. So sorry for this. Oh, God, I, you, you don't know what I paid in psychiatric bills to deal with that issue. <laughs> and, and anyways, then, you, know, yeah. I, I, you know, I have to ask you before we get going, um, where is the Surf Republic? A on your Twitter handle there, you, that's where you say you live. Where, where is the Surf Republic? And is that you on a sailboard? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, cool, the Surf Republic. Yeah. Well, um, let's say that Surf Republic exists everywhere. Everywhere okay. where good people are, where you have a sea and wind. Beautiful. All yeah. right. Well, you know what? That's a nation I want to be a citizen of. And uh, I am. I am already for a long time. Yeah. Okay, buddy. <laughs> so uh, I like to start off with people are interested i'm interested in what happened to bring you into the industry what was a catalyst uh what was it like for you uh what tell us a little bit about how your journey began into the trading industry okay dale so uh, it may sound odd but i regard myself as a newbie in this business because i hate I'm that word <laughs> yeah. All right, well, go ahead. But, but it's true. It's true. I'm only eight right. years in the trading business. All right. And uh, I got involved purely accidentally. Uh, I had a very good friend, and he's, believe it or not, an artist. He's a painter and sculptor. 
And uh, once I paid him a visit, because he had an exhibition in a couple of days, um, I saw him in front of a screen with some very, very odd charts in front of him, because at that time I had no idea what he is looking at. And it was, in fact, some charts of um, foreign exchange currencies. And okay. he was trading, and he told me, just give me a minute and sit down and watch. And I watched him making 150 bucks in five minutes. So I'm done. Okay, so we can go further. And I asked him, no, 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 just give me a minute. So I saw something, and you need to explain me what you did. And in a few words, he explained me the foreign exchange, how he's trading, opening an account. You need uh, to uh, search for a good broker, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it was very interesting because at that time I was, uh, I'm still am, but my day job was as a software developer, so nothing, oh, okay. nothing to do with trading. Right. Okay. And it was it was a stressful job, you know. Uh, when, when when I started working as a software developer, it was very challenging. Um, it was very interesting, but as the time passes by, uh, I got tired in learning every six months the new stuff because you know that technology is advancing right. so far. Ever changing. Exactly. Like the markets. And, yeah. In a but, way. But yeah. In, in a way. In a way. But yeah, this, is, yeah. this is something uh, you have new technologies emerging every six months, or let's say a year, and you have to start from scratch. That would that burn me out good. too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And at some point, at some point, uh, you get tired of learning and keeping up with the technology because that's your job. And right. uh, the 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 time frames for projects were shorter, more requests, the salary stayed the same, and I saw an opportunity by trading, having the freedom to work when I want, how much I want, and yeah. even make much, much more than my monthly salary, with less time wasted on working. So that was my general idea, and that was uh, the main thing. So money was the driver, not not some passion or uh, anything else, money. Uh, the right. freedom, uh, doing what you want, yeah. how you want, and when you want. Yeah, so it wasn't, it wasn't just the money. It was the independence of being able to live life and not just... Uh, be, you know, like a guy who worked in a factory, got up every morning, did the same thing for 40 years, and yeah. then then he retired and died. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so like you wanted, you got out of the grind. Did you have any uh, early on, you know, I was fortunate, I was able to learn a lot of things on the floor. It existed back then, open outcry. Uh, the internet is so filled with a lot of, excuse my French, crap. <laughs> uh, people yeah. guaranteeing, guaranteeing uh, they know the secret and mm -hmm. send me this amount and, you know, thousand percent returns and all of that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Did you did you get lucky and and meet some good people that helped you along the way and some bad people that hurt you? Well, I would say both, but okay. let's say uh, more good people than bad people. Great. Uh, anyway, um, when I started out. Um, like what kind of person I am. I am a, a very analytical person, and that's why uh, my day job was as a software developer. And that approach uh, led me to uh, investigate everything before drawing any conclusions. So what I did uh, was, in fact, uh, information gathering wherever I could, from friends, um, mainly internet books, just to get into the subject, into the matter, to understand how the markets work and okay. how can I uh, prosper by trading the markets. So uh, just getting in, not knowing what you're doing, is the recipe for disaster and losing all your money. And I was did aware you, of that. Did you ever yeah. blow, an, blow up an account? No, not one. I okay, had some big drawdowns, but never blew my account. Okay. Because, uh, you know, when you get down, but pretty much down, let's say some 60, 70 percent, then uh, you step back, you take a break, you think yeah. about what you did. Why did this happen? What right. did I wrong? Right. And that is that analytical approach. Like you're writing a code 
and uh, you, you're testing the code and it doesn't work the way it should, you need to find the errors. So if it is a syntax error, it's, uh, it will be pointed out by your editor. But if it is, um, let's say, an algorithmic error, so you have used a wrong variable in some function, it's hard to find. So you need to analyze every single bit of code and then you find the error. That's what I did. And in fact, I was learning, learning and learning and testing paper trading mostly for years. And then when I realized that I know exactly what I'm doing and I know I can be profitable, then I started putting real money online. Okay. So how long, how many years did you paper trade or demo trade? <clears throat> well, to be honest, let's say some three or four years. Okay, that most people do not have the patience to do that. I also want to ask you, with your former back, background, and you know what's becoming very popular nowadays are uh, EAs and robots and algos. Mm -hmm. And with your coding background, are you ever tempted to, or have you already uh, uh, used that skill for uh, assisting you in the markets? Yes, I have, naturally. Uh, okay. The thing I'm working on is an artificial intelligence system which will evaluate all the data. So let's say big data evaluation uh, under certain criteria. And after this evaluation, uh, I'm building a decision support system. It's in fact something that will tell you what to do. And the next step after this decision support system is a fully automated system, which okay. will learn and do, uh, um, let's say, doing by learning. So everything that has happened in the past and every new event that is different than all the events in the past, it takes into account and then makes the decision what to do. But I'm, let's be honest, I'm, I'm far away from having uh, some system that will work that way because... Um, we are fighting against each other. There are not uh, algorithms on the other side we are fighting against. Those algorithms are written by humans. So it's not some alien technology we are fighting against right. on the other side of our trades. Okay. Those are humans that have written algorithms. And if I write my algorithms, it's human versus human or algo versus algo. It's the same thing. Okay. All right, it's so interesting. I think, I think, yeah, we are far away from this having some holy grail of three. You can have a system that is more profitable. So let's say it makes more money than it loses. You can have it. But to make a very, very profitable system without any human intervention, so uh, working on its own, we are far away from this. Okay, Stan. So That's my honest opinion. Okay, so uh, we're looking at the Dixie here, and I'm looking at the setup, and... You have the ascending triangle line there with the breakout at 97.80. We've been on both sides of it, uh, closing in on the lower end of the range. What do you have at the bottom? Is that a MACD? Uh, what's the green and red down there at the bottom? No, that's the Elliott Wave Oscillator. Oh, it's an Elliott Wave Oscillator. Okay. Uh, tell us about that and uh, how you use it. Well, I mainly use Elliott Wave Oscillator to distinguish between the waves of the Elliott Wave theory okay. but in fact you can use it as a standalone because it works pretty much like the relative strength index uh, a macd it gives you the divergence between uh, oscillator value and the price action and that's okay. mainly uh, the, the main thing i'm looking at when i'm looking at the Elliott wave oscillator beside that this oscillator is showing me the tops and bottoms of waves because I, okay. I use Elliott Waves as my fundamental analysis when I am analyzing any instrument. Okay. So uh, what, what's your count uh, where we're at in the dollar here? And well, if fact, you use Elliott Wave, you probably have an alternate too, right? Yes. Uh, I always have two, two counts. Okay. One right. that is obvious and the other one that could be, in fact, if the first one gets invalidated. So in, in this particular case, I have started the Elliott wave sequence from the bottom because I'm not interested in what happened before. This was the impulse wave going up. And it should have ended right here on the count. And we had the triple top. Yeah. So this could be an irregular ABC correction for a down move so far since we have seen something that is very, very interesting. And this is this fake breakout. 
yeah. why this is a fake breakout because the price yeah. did test the breakout but went below. And if you right. have a real breakout, momentum breakout after a triple top, it should have gone much, much higher and continue go higher. But it right. didn't. So this might be a fake one. And what I'm looking at, this first support has held. Now we are breaking down. This week was a fat rejection. This yep. is another support, and we are slightly breaking the support, but I believe that the 55 EMA will hold the price for, let's say, a couple of days, maybe for the weekend, because it is very uncertain what will happen next week. Right. And well, if we So you have those, a 55 as a red. What's a blue one? 89. How did you come up with those two and why? I mean, they're they're pretty close to each other. Usually people have, you know, a short-term, medium-term, and long-term moving average. You look for, I don't see one cross on this all the way up. So how are you using these moving averages and why did you select those day, that number of days? Uh, firstly, the 55 and 89, both of them are numbers from the Fibonacci array. Okay. That's, okay. Valid, so, yeah. The, the second thing I'm looking at, uh, this 55 and 89, both of them are very, very important. Mark me if I am in bullish territory or bearish territory. So if the price is above, this is bullish, I'm looking to go long. If it's below, I'm looking to go short. And most importantly, many times, the 55 and the 89, we will see, depending on the instrument we are trading, uh, could be both of them or either one of them will represent a support or resistance. In fact, if you look at the Dixie, this was support, 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 yeah. broken, some small support right here for a bounce, broken, resistance, went above. So this is the playing around. I would say that the 55 and 89 represent, in my view, a fair price. Everything that goes far away from those is either overbought or oversold. And in many cases, the 55 and or 89 provide some decent... They're kind support. of like a mean for you. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And you get mean reversions where it'll yeah. go above it or below it and come back to it. Exactly. Or hold it. Okay. Cool, Stan. So my view on the, on the Dixie is, and depending on Dixie, the euro dollar will act, uh, is that we will find some support right here because it was earlier a support. You can see in this structure right here, this was support. We mm -hmm. have support right here in this structure. So it could provide some support. And then we will see if we bounce off the 55, we will continue higher. If we break, the next one will be the 89. Then we are looking for this particular support trend line and then much, much lower. So uh, since this is far away, could be a couple of days seeing this resolve around these moving averages and this trend line, then I will be interested in analyzing further to see how much downside or maybe upside we are on. Okay, great look. So, uh, and uh, let me show you something else which is sure. very interesting. So, we see that we are looking uh, at the daily, we are seeing the Dixie coming into the 55 from above. Mm -hmm. If we look at the euro dollar, we can see that the euro dollar, let me just make it bigger, is coming from below into the 55, right? So, it's the same thing. Yeah, if the Dixie breaks the 55, the euro dollar will break this 55. But my view on the euro dollar is bearish still until 110. That's my target on the short. Okay, so you're you'd be a seller here, uh, yes. looking for 110. Yes, and what Look. and how are you managing risk with the uh 89 day moving average? If it closes above it, you would liquidate your short. No, no. Uh, my stop loss on any trade depends on the price action, so the wicks, okay? Yeah. So if we have this wicks, so this is a fat rejection of the 55, you can see clearly it tried yeah. to break, it didn't close above. This was the recent support. The break of this support is my entry, this is my stop right above. Okay, so you're in BE now, and you're in small profits now anyway from where you did it. So yeah. uh, do, you, do you take partials, Stan, or... Uh, how do you, you know, the, uh, this is something I've been asking a lot of people lately, you mm -hmm. know, it's not easy to do to make a great trade, to make a great forecast, but the toughest thing to do is to have a great hold. 
Yes. Because especially if you look at shorter term stuff, you always think, well, I could just book it here and then put it back out there. And then you turn your head and the market gets away from you and you earn the tough money, like the first 30, 40 pips. And it could have been windfalls if you had the discipline to walk away and manage it that way. How do you turn a good trade into a good hold? Well, it depends when I enter. If I am early in a trade and I tend to look for early entries, why? Because on the early entry, you have the least amount of risk. However, if you miss, or let's say I missed the early entry, let me give you an example. Let's say uh, we are taking a short right here and I missed this one. I'm looking for this wick. This is a support. This is a big bearish candle. We have a pullback. After the pullback, right into the median of this uh, descending channel. So this break right here, the new bearish break, would be an entry, this would be a stop. Um, in holding a position, I never hold one position, my starting one, never. I add on the way down. I have my targets. I never open a position in the markets without knowing before where my stop is so I can calculate my risk and therefore I can calculate my risk to reward. I need to have a target. It could okay. be a shallow target, small target, could be a big one. Do you have in a fact, rule? I like mean, a lot of people look for a three to one or they don't take it. Yes, I would say less than two to one is not a trade. Three okay. to one, five to one, seven to one. I entered the trade with 12 to one risk to reward. That was awesome. Why? Okay. Because if, if a trade fails and let's say we have another loser and we have another loser in a row, so three in a row, the fourth, and, and I, if I take the fourth trade and the fourth trade is a winner, I have good chances to get out break even or maybe even with a small profit. It depends okay. on your risk to reward. And that's the main okay. thing. Okay. The but later you get in, the later to get, you get in, the more the risk you have. Because yeah. you can't possibly know when the price will turn. Okay. Um, were there any other instruments besides euro and dollar that uh, is on your radar that you'd like to share or discuss with us? This one is very interesting, the US dollar versus Norwegian krona. This is an instrument I trade very, very often because it gives uh, good profits, uh, less risk. I know how it behaves since the Norwegian krona is very tied up to the price of oil and uh, the Norwegian OBX index, 26% of the index is... Yeah, one oil. of my partners loves to trade it too. Stelios loves to trade USD NOC. So your yeah, reason is, your reason is it's a great technical market and yes. uh, it's your, it's a great proxy for oil. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. And if if you follow the price of oil, I'm not an oil trader. I have traded oil maybe let's say three times in my whole career. Uh, I won one, I lost two. Figured mm -hmm. out this is not the type of instrument for me. It doesn't fit me, so I'm not trading oil, but I'm observing oil what it what it does regarding the price action. So I know when I look at oil and the dollar index, what am I going to do with the dollar krona? So now we have for, let's say, some foreseeable time that the price is in a range. This is the daily. On the weekly chart, I don't have it on this one. I can draw it in. Just bear with me. The weekly. What we have, in fact, on the weekly chart is a channel. And this is the weekly channel, the sending channel, this one. And we have a triple top on the channel and on the range. So this might be very, very important. If we break out, then this is a breakout of a very, very long consolidation since we yeah. uh, came in from five, six, yeah, oh, five, six, six years. eight. Yeah, it was uh, 2013. Let's, yeah, so let's wow. say we started rising mid 2015 we got in so we are high and if we break higher i don't know where the limit is but my view is that this will go down rather than up we could have a fake break but looking short term we will be looking for a short trade from this tops right back into the support and the 55 again you can see okay. clearly how how important these two moving averages are because we have them as support right here very very important even on the weekly so these two moving averages work on any time frame and i use them even on a one minute time frame okay this is very interesting uh, new zealand dollar 
this was this morning I discovered something and this is very very important so we had uh, a bullish Gartley on the daily taking from these lows from 0.64 back down here and this coincides with an Elliott wave bearish sequence completing at this level and most importantly we have a fat rejection this long wick it happened here and it happened right here what uh, happened afterwards was a bullish rally in both okay. cases so I don't think it will not happen for the third time so regarding the harmonic we are looking for this target so technically, this would be a target for this particular setup and this big fat rejection. Uh, okay. Gold. Wow, you use everything. Harmonics. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Everything. Yeah. Okay. No, no, not everything. I have. Well, I mean a lot of things. Okay. Not, not a lot of things. There are maybe four or five things I'm using uh, as my tools. Well, you know, I'm a, I, to me it's a lot because I'm a one-trick pony, three drives <laughs> and RSI. So go ahead, Stan. <laughs> Um, it took me three years to develop the method I'm using ever since and I'm using it for let's say two and a half years and this method has been proven to be very very profitable with so small losses if any and that is the right combination of different strategies so every strategy by itself has good and bad sides so flaws and very profitable sides but if you combine them in the right way, so if you take all the necessary ingredients, then you have a very good recipe. And I think I think I have found this one and it works for me. <clears throat> and uh, there is not a lot of things. Uh, I use harmonics because I was a harmonic trader for years. Elliott waves are my fundamental. They use to determine where the price action is at the moment. So I know what to expect. Am I going to uh, look for longs or for shorts? Or so maybe Elliot for your biases. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay. And you know, you you don't you don't have only one view regarding Elliot waves. You need to have an alternative. And my alternative in this particular case, this is gold, could be that we are looking for a rejection again at the 89. You can see this clearly. The price couldn't break above the 89. It is trying again for God knows what time. It could break down and this wave five or the C or the low two of the wave two could be even lower, could be. But for this moment in time, we have a double bottom. We have a <clears throat> multi-top that could be broken and this could break this resistance trend line and going into the wave three, which is much, much higher above 1360. So that's okay. my view. And this is very, very similar to silver. We have, I believe, that we have the low of the wave two. We are still in this wedge. This was a fake break. And I would expect it to break higher rather than lower. Is, uh, uh, are your uh, MAs, I'm getting a couple of questions Yes. Um, from the attendees. Russell wants to know if the MA is simple or exponential. Well, the difference between simple and exponential is just the way it is calculated. So uh, you can use the, the simple and exponential. I tend to use exponential ones because they are much smoother than the simple. But okay. it's the same thing. It's okay. the same thing. And if, if you don't mind, someone is interested in uh, where you are from. It's a small country on the Balkans called Serbia, former okay. Yugoslavia. Okay. So, uh, how old are you? Ballpark? <laughs> 50. Okay, so uh, you went through some hell in your 20s, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. I okay, did. man, I'm uh, so glad I you fought, came through it. Yeah, I fought in two wars, not willingly. I had to. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I would have been court-martialed. And yeah. uh, Shot. yes, uh, yes uh, I would say... Um, it was a hard time. I'm yeah. so glad that you, you know, so uh, trading must uh, seem like a walk in the park, okay? Because you told me about your early background and the pressure of, you know, being a software uh, coder developer. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. And that must have been a walk in the park compared to the experiences that you have to go through as a young man. And, I, you know, uh, you're a warrior in, in all ways, Stan. And, uh, you know, I'm so glad that, you know, we got to, 
ask you that question and uh, uh, you're an inspiration to people that have been through hard times and kept swinging the bat and found a place where they could be happy and uh, uh, always fascinated and interested in what they're doing every day. And uh, I, I, you know, I know our whole community is glad for you because you came here and you edified us. So uh, like it or not, buddy, you're my trading warrior brother now. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Thank you very much. So uh, yeah, I also see you don't have an ax to grind. Uh, what are you doing on social media? You just like to exchange ideas with people and uh, or do you teach, do you mentor people? Uh, you, you would be a natural one from your presentation. Do you do any of that? Yes, yes I do. And uh, I started uh, two years ago and the main driver for this was, as you know, uh, you are much more experienced than I am. I am a newbie comparing to you, Dale. Um, this is a lonely business. You are alone with the screens in front of you. you I'm alone. lonely. Yeah. I'm Mr. Exactly. Lonely. <laughs> Go ahead, man. All right. <laughs> you have no people around to share your pain and joy as well. So yeah. what I what I what I decided to do is, in fact, since I developed this method, which is a very good one, I've tested it myself many many times with my real money um, I, I decided to to gather a small group of people explain them my method and to form a small group very very small group of people who I work with so it's not okay. the, the kind of room with hundreds of people and uh, they right. are paying you have a family you have a trading family. Yeah, yes yeah yeah sort of a family yes yeah I love, very, I love that people. yeah yeah and we are exchanging ideas, thoughts, not only trading related, but from life, uh, yeah. anything that, that, that comes across. We are discussing about, I don't know, um, uh, the other day, um, what is our wanted to buy a... You guys discuss whether or not our president's hair is really orange? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Okay. Everything. All right. It's like a family, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a big believer in that. And uh, so uh, I guess the best way for people to reach you, Stan, is through your Twitter handle. You want to yes. give people that or maybe an email. And what does uh, VDI, Insta, the, you know, your logo that flashes up on the screen, what do those words mean? Your logo uh, with that gold logo flashes up every once yeah. in a while. Yeah. What's it mean? That's the... Um... I have to tell you in, in, in short words the story behind this logo. So uh, the artist I was telling you who brought me into this uh, game of trading had an idea, in fact, to um, make the biggest, the biggest uh, Forex, um, I don't know, event, let's say, on the Balkans and hosted in Belgrade. It was some, some years ago. Yeah. And he asked me to develop... Um, a website uh, along with an application that will um, back up all the event. And I started making some logo for that system, in fact, and the, the, the name was FX Imperia. That, high, uh, that oh, okay. means, in my language, empire. Yeah. Okay. And since everything went down the drain, uh, they didn't host any event, nothing. Um, that logo was somewhere in my drawer, and then I took it out and said, okay, so this looks nice. I can use it for myself. Show it. It's Show it on the screen. It. Show oh, it. Oh, Jesus, I have to find this. Oh, no, I it kept it. popping up, so it's got to be right there. And I'm interested in what the words, the translation of the words. You yeah. can see my screen, yeah? Yeah, this right. One. Yeah, what do the words mean underneath it? I, uh, I saw, I traded... I prospered. Wow. Yeah. And it's three. I'm a big believer in three. Okay. Yes. So that's it's a one complete. Of the Tesla numbers. You know, I, you're all, yeah. You know, it's almost like I talked to the emperor of Serbia. <laughs> you're the, I, I interviewed an emperor in Serbia today, Face. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stan. Yeah, I, I had a great time. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with us for a half an hour. And um, yes, I had. Yeah, and why don't you just give everyone their t follow this guy? Everyone who's here, follow Stan because I went down your stream before I interviewed you, and you've made some good calls in many different markets, and you show charts and 
Stan's a great follow. So uh, why don't you put out your Twitter handle for people, uh, show it on the screen. So when people watch uh, the video, they could find it too. And you're getting some thank yous from Russell and Elena and Jacques and Joshua. So thank you so much for being with us, buddy. Thank you, Dale, for inviting me. And I really had a good time talking to you. Okay. And, uh, you know, may pips rain down on you, partner, enough to Thank fill you. up uh, every water barrel you have outside your house. <laughs> Thank you. Likewise. All right, buddy. Everyone, that's Stan, and you can find him on Twitter. Uh, I have his uh, handle here. Let me go to it, and I'll give it to you. So you go to at FXIMP. E R I J like John A at F X Imperija. Okay. Yeah. All right, Stan. Have a great weekend, buddy. Good yeah, hunting. you too. Have a blast. Keep Dale. keep in keep in touch. All right, man. I will. All right, Stan. All right, everyone. That's yeah. a wrap. Remember, don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. And we'll see everyone Monday. Have a great weekend. Adios. To all my trading warrior brothers and sisters, enjoy. Smell the roses. It's spring. Adios.